All right. So, Allison, thank you for agreeing to come on the podcast. I'm excited to dive into your story today. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be here and, and chat with you about this. Yeah, and so our the main topic today isn't like a warm and fuzzy topic, but I want to start with the warm and fuzzy, right? Because before we get yeah. to where we're going and what I teased in the intro, you know, there's a love story here. So why don't you tell us about William and how you guys met and all the good stuff that happened before this not so good stuff we'll get into. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. It's definitely not warm and fuzzy, especially right now, but um, it definitely started there. And that's where we, he and I often try to, to reflect back to. Um, so we met um, back in 2018. So not, not too long ago, if I'm completely frank. Um, we met working at Woodlock Pines Resort. It's a large family hotel up in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, he had been coming for four or so summers to work um, during his summer break. Um, so William is Slovakian. I should have started with that. Um, so Slovakia is uh, in Europe, Eastern Europe area, um, and he lives in the northern region. So he had been coming uh, in between, like I said, his, his summers um, during college and during his master's to just work, um, kind of get a taste of the American culture, travel, um, save some money like any college kid. Um, we met, uh, I had been working at Woodlock for about eight months um, and he came that summer, that May of 2018. Um, I was obviously found him very cute, very attractive, um, but was very against getting to know him more. I did not want to get involved. I was like, he's going to go home. And um, long story short, we started to get to know another better, better, and uh, started dating that following August. Um, pretty much the first month of dating, we knew we were. He was like my best friend automatically. We did everything together. Um, we, you know, went on various trips. We went to California in our first month of dating. I mean, I took him to meet the family, the grandparents. Um, I mean, we were, I was very brave, which is not normally me. I'm a very anxious and reserved person, but um, Velo breaks me out of my shell. He is the best guy in the world. Um, so yeah, we, um, at some point, once his time with Woodlock ended, he wound up going back home to Slovakia in November, end of November, um, right before Christmas. And uh, that was the first time we were saying goodbye in the airport. And oh, it's just horrible. Like I think about it and it makes me shiver um, and not in a good way. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was great. I got to actually go and meet his family that November and he's come here multiple times and We've just kind of been traveling back and forth to meet each other whenever we get the chance. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a little bit about our story, I guess. Lots more, sure. but. Yeah, yeah, and so the, the the high points here, right? Like you said, you guys met at Woodlock Pines Resort. And I don't know why, but I'm totally conjuring up like dirty dancing in my mind. You know, like that, that whole resort, that family resort, right? Where you guys were working there, sure. will they, won't they? Sure. Maybe there was dancing involved. <laughs> Uh, Definitely not. not. We are <laughs> hardcore Netflix. Users. No, we nice. would go on hikes. We would, you know, do all the fall things. Go to wineries. You know, we both love to travel, so we would sneak away to Cape May for a weekend, went to the Jersey Shore. Um, you know, he really loved getting to know my parents as well, and uh, still to this day, when we Facetime, he's always like, "How's your dad? How's your mom? Can I chat with them?" And steals the phone for me, but. Yeah, lots of lots of good moments with him and that I. Is cool. Yeah, and then so you guys met, you dated, you were brave, like you said, and then about nine months later, boom, engaged, April 2019. So talk about that. How did he do it? I don't know if I heard this story. Yeah, no, he totally shocked me. I And it's actually, this is a great little backstory, which I'm so excited to tell, like, tell our kids and our family one day because I think it's just hilarious. Um, so he was visiting in April of um, 2019 and it was great. We had the whole family together, my brother, Kevin, his wife, Sarah, um, my mom, and my dad, we were all down in Florida. And I had been living there and working and doing yoga teacher training and pursuing my dietetic internship. And um, he came to visit for about two weeks. We went to Disney World, we did all like the typical Florida things, you know, went to the yeah. beach. Um, there was one day right before um, Easter that we were going out to dinner and he was in the shower, like getting ready. And I was wandering around the kitchen, probably making a drink or something. And 
uh, we got a knock on the door. So I answer the door and it's like, oh, a package for William Barhole. And I'm like, what? what? Okay, like he's he's been here for like a week. Why is he having packages <laughs> delivered? I go into my room and I like toss on the bed. I'm like, hey, you got a package. Uh, I don't know. And walked away. Um, turns out that next day, we go out to dinner. Um, we celebrate my birthday and Easter. And we go out to this beautiful dinner, have great food, you know, wine, the works. We get back to our, my house. And I walk in the back door. And he, he had told me, he's like, get dressed up. We're going to, like, have a nice night out. And um, we walk in. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to take my shoes off. Like, I'm thrilled. <laughs> We're home, you know. And uh, sweatpants, yeah. And uh, we walk through the kitchen, and it's like dark, but there's candles everywhere. And I'm like, this is a fire hazard. Like my dad, if you've ever met my father, hates candles. He gets so paranoid about this thing. So I'm like, there's like we gotta blow these out. Like why are all these candles lit? Totally missing the moment. And he's like, just keep walking, just keep walking. So we keep going, keep going. We get outside and we have a pool in Florida and the whole pool and the whole outdoor area was lined with candles and flowers. And oh my God, it was like so romantic. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, Still not getting it. I turn around, my parents are sitting in two chairs um, watching the whole thing happen. And I turn back around and he's down on one knee. And I just sobbed like I was, oh God, it, it was one of those moments that you'll always look back on and laugh and just be like, I don't remember what I said. I, bl I totally oh, yeah. blanked out. Yeah, I, I totally but, like that. Um, yeah. Turns out the package that was delivered was my ring. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That I, like, I had in my hands and was like, what is this? Didn't think ever opened to is like, why didn't you open it? I'm like, that would have ruined the whole surprise, but. I should have now looking back, but <laughs> yeah, total, total surprise. But, um, I've never been a believer of that when you know, you know, but sure. I know. It's you didn't know. You hadn't met him yet. Yeah. yeah. So no, absolutely. But when did he go back home? So you guys got engaged and then at what point did he go back home and for what reason? Yeah. So every time he would come to visit, he would come on what's called an ESTA or a tourist visa. Um, so basically that just means that someone can come and stay for up to 90 days or, or three months. Um, when someone comes on that, they do have to show proof of that they are intending to return home. So typically it's like a return flight or um, evidence that you have a job to go back to, things like that. Um, so anytime he would come to visit, he would he came in after he originally went back home when we first met, that he went back home in November. He came and visited in April, and then he came back to visit in August when we had our engagement party and, and kind of, you know, started to really wedding plan. Um, when he would leave, he would obviously go home and he had a job to return to. Um, his whole family is still in Slovakia. So while well, obviously we wanted him to stay for like that three month time and spend all the time we could together, we were both pursuing our careers and our jobs. Um, he yeah. is an engineer, a hydraulic focused engineer, and I'm a dietitian. So, I mean, we both have very busy stuff going on, but there was no way for him to stay legally um, with the visa process uh, for longer than that three month period, or, you know, in our case, he stayed for two weeks. Um, so he left in August to go back home. And we had intended my parents and I to go visit in December of this past year. So December, 2019. Um, and that is the last time I saw him. So was we December went to visit. A, yeah. When you, we went when to you visit. were over there the last time. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So my parents and I went to, uh, flew into Poland. Uh, and it's the third time. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to brag it, but it's, I love Europe. I love everything about it. It's great. It's a whole different world. Um, yeah. but you know, getting the chance to see it through his eyes as well. And, and with my own personal tour guide is always fun. <laughs> um, my parents and I went, they really were adamant on wanting to meet his family before the wedding, which was supposed to be in May. Um, so yeah, we went and visited and just did all the typical touristy things and spent time with his wonderful, wonderful family. They are, oh, they're the best. Um, but yeah, I left in, we left on December 12th of 2019 and I have not seen him since. So. Yeah. And so let's, how about we see him? I'm going to bring him into the stream here. Just a photo yeah. of him. There he is. He's and in this, in this photo, 
And in the social media post, it's obviously a screenshot of you guys face climbing. And in it, you say that it's been over 300 days since you guys have been in yep. person. And this is the way you've been communicating to your fiance for almost a year because yeah. of, right, the elephant in the room has been COVID-19, right? And the travel restrictions to and from Europe and to and from the United States as the world continues to battle yeah. the pandemic. Um, so when was yeah. he supposed to come in for the wedding? If the wedding was in May, he's supposed to be here by when? So ideally he would have been here in, in like late March, early April. Um, he was hoping to have been here, you know, early April was the latest we were hoping for to do, you know, the tasting and my bridal shower and all those like fun little wrapping up pieces that a wedding is supposed to, you know, all that joy and shininess that a wedding is supposed to have. Um, I remember the day that we got the phone, I got, I was actually sitting, uh, during my dietetic internship, I was staying with my aunt and I was sitting on the bed watching, um, Netflix, my parents had called and all of a sudden my dad's like, borders are closed. What borders are closed. So I immediately Googled border closed, like COVID and, um, oh. it was March 13th and that was when the borders had decided to shut. So we had been communicating via Skype. That's pretty much what we use all the time. Um, for that three month period, hoping that, yeah, he'd be coming in, um, in early April and it's just been delayed ever since. So, and is there yeah, any, it's tough. is there anything on the horizon that says, you know, like a forecasted opening date or is it all kind of in the air with, you know, election stuff and will they, won't they? Yeah. So the difficult part of, of why William can't come into the country, that's a lot of things. That's a lot of the question I get is why, why can't yeah. he just come in? Why can't you guys get married? Why can't you go there and get married? Um, so basically our, our process and what's going on is that he and I applied for what's called a K-1 visa. Um, everyone knows it as the fiancé visa from the 90 Day Fiancé show on TLC. Right. Um, you know, plot twist, we are real. We are truly in love. Um, this is not a show. This is not a joke. It's our real life. And it's it's hard to, to continue to stay positive when this is going on. But we applied back in 2018 for our fiancé visa. We were officially approved by the United States Customs and Immigration Services in February, and they then sent it to the National Visa Center. So it goes through all these different layers and processes before it can act you can actually just enter the country. Um, obviously, this is very legitimate. It's the way to do this legally. There are safe ways to do it, um, and it's you know we're we're happy to say that we're doing everything we can to to make sure that when he is here, he's staying and he's not going anywhere. Um, so, you know, right now there is a current travel ban put in place. Um, there was a presidential proclamation banning travel from countries in which there was a higher risk of the coronavirus basically being brought into the U.S. Um, that includes countries like um, obviously China. It included the Schengen region, which is the entire European Union, therefore including Slovakia, Brazil, um, I believe Iran, um, the UK, Ireland, pretty much all of Europe was just shut down. Um, and it was based on the fact that, okay, they were going to bring these individuals that are coming from, from that location are going to bring COVID into the United States. Was there any proof of that at that point? No. Was there any, con no, but, but that seemed like the safest thing to do. And at the, at the initial point of the pandemic, we did too. Everyone wants to be safe. My older brother's a doctor. My sister-in-law is a nurse. I work in healthcare as a dietitian. I mean, I understood the safety precautions and, and right. I'm the biggest fan of, of safety and science. But um, at this point, it feels like a little bit of a delay just because of a delay. Um, sure. So, we, so at, you know, point, if I, go ahead. At, what, at what point did you find out about this movement, if you will, love is not tourism? And could you, so you're not the only person dealing with this, right? And so now there's this, movement, that's what I'll say again, out there. So can you talk to this and how you found out about it and how you've gotten involved in it? Yeah. So um, obviously I mentioned before, and I mentioned a thousand times, I'm a very anxious person and I uh, have dealt with a lot of mental health struggles throughout this pandemic for obviously a number of reasons, but um, being apart from somebody you love and all you want to do is be together. I mean, gosh, it's, it's horrible. Um, so I started looking for, we both started looking for resources and, and just other people that were maybe going through the same thing. Um, we were hoping for someone else to understand our story. Um, as wonderful as my family and my parents have been during all of this, no one really gets it. 
Um, and I frequently don't talk about this because it, I, I said to you, I get very emotional and I get very heated when I talk about it because it's, it's just not fair. So um, I began to look for resources and, and love is not tourism came up as, as one of the outlets. Um, so obviously I, I was searching through Facebook. I'm not a huge social media girl anymore, but Facebook had uh, a lot of these groups called love is not tourism. And um, I started looking through the hashtags and all the different, you know, um, posts that people were sharing. Um, right. And when I last looked, there were like 36.4 thousand people in this Love Is Not Tourism group, the main one. Um, sure. They have since branched off to smaller groups per country. Um, so I'm sure there's like Love Is Not Tourism France, Love Is Not Tourism Brazil, Love Is Not Tourism Slovakia. Um, and uh, it's just basically people sharing their stories of being apart from their loved one, whether it's a fiance, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a partner, a parent, a child. Um, I mean, the, the, there are so many people with so many incredible stories. Um, I often, my heart tugs for the people that have had, you know, have been pregnant and have their have a child during this pandemic, and their partner is not allowed to come see them because of this travel ban. Um, it's awesome. just a little mind boggling to me. So, yeah, I can't imagine hard that. To picture. All. Yeah, well, all of it is hard to imagine, right? Unless like you couldn't imagine it until you were in it, right? It's one of those things that you always feel like that won't happen to me, or that's you know in a movie yeah. someplace, right? And then you are. Yeah, a lot of days I'm like, okay, is this really happening? Is this real? Like, are we still going through this? You know, ten months yeah. later, it's 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 really, really, really challenging to stay positive and to like get out of bed every day knowing that you're still facing this battle and it seems like no one is hearing you, no one is reporting on it. Like this is something you don't see in the news. No one's talking about this. And it's horrible because there's so many other terrible things going on in the world. And I get that. I'm not asking for the almighty spotlight to be shown on on this, but I just think, you know, if people knew more about this, I feel like things would start moving in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's that site you were talking about where they have you know, they've got the different countries you're referencing and it, here it does talk about the different Facebook groups where it's split off to what you're saying. So if you're watching a video right now, or you're listening to me and you can't see what's on the screen. This is loveisnottourism.org. And I'll put a link to the show notes of the podcast where you guys can click on it and check it out. But this is a lot of what Allison is talking about and some of the references that are available out there. If you're curious about it or you know someone that's affected and, you know, you want to help spread the word, this is a good place to go. Yeah, it's really cool. This this group, um, you know, was started and has actually gone on to. If you scroll, I think back down the the couple of countries that they list right there. You know, Denmark, Norway, Netherlands, France. All of these countries have started to take steps to allow couples and family members and loved ones to meet in a safe manner. Things like including quarantines, you know, in mandatory testing, masking on and off the plane, social distancing, all the things that the rest of us are living with, with the COVID-19 pandemic. But these countries have started to see, hey, this is taking a really big toll on people's lives. I mean, at the end of the day, people, this, these are people's lives and to, and to continue to hinder people from getting to see their loved ones. You know, what effect does that have long-term on, on someone's mental health on someone's, you know, just life in general? It's, it's a lot sure. to, to take on. So that website has a lot of great resources as far as, you know, Google Docs and forms and samples of a letter to a senator um, and, you know, ways to just get involved and to, to, make, a, to make a point, to, to stand up and speak for, for us who are kind of in this lull right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what are, you said write to your senators. And I had that ready to go with a banner here. So that's a way that people that are watching or listening can get involved, right? There's stories like yours out there. There's thousands of others. What average folks yeah. like us can do is write to our senator. But what does that mean? What do we write to our senators about? What do we say? Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so, and it's always challenging when people write to my senator. I'm like, oh, well, what do I, what do I say? Um, you know, there's lots of templates out there of, of what to say. Love is not tourism, like I said, has a great one that basically gives you the, the printed language and then you can modify as needed. Um, I often say, you know, keep it, Keep it generic, but also add personal notes. So, you know, don't feel like you have to mention my name. Obviously, you know, there are tons of couples out there, not just me who are suffering from this, but, but you know, 
basically what we are, are asking for is for the, the borders to be reopened. Um, we're asking for the presidential proclamation, which you can search, if you search in Google, presidential proclamation banning travel, I forget what number it is, um, but ask for it to be lifted or at least reviewed. When this initially came out back in March, we were told that it was gonna be reviewed every 30 days. Since March, I have not seen a single update on it or known that it's been reviewed or or reflected upon. You know, the status of, of COVID has been changing every single week. So how can we say that how things were back in March is exactly how it is today? So write to your senators on that. Presidential proclamation, open the borders, um, end the travel ban. There's a lot of buzzwords that we like to use, which, you know, obviously in general, the love is not tourism. Like, there's no better way to say it. We're not right. doing that's this because we want it. That's just like a fact, right? That's not a, it, it, it works because it it's sums it up very simple. well. Yeah. yeah. So that's just one, one way, right? To your senators, your governor, your congressperson. Um, you can find that easily by, again, doing a quick Google search. Who is the senator for Florida, Pennsylvania, whatever, um, you know, any, any letter to a government body can help because it shows them, again, they're working for us, right? They're representing yep. us. They're getting their voice out there on our behalf. So by telling them what is important to us and what we're interested in, that's, that's the only way they're going to know if we don't, unless we speak, you know, if we don't speak up, how, how, how are they going to guess? hundred percent. Yeah. So another way is this petition, right? You sent me this before yeah. our call here. Yeah. So this so is Another hashtag you mentioned, right? Like hashtag love is not tourism. There's hashtag lift the travel ban on change.org. Yep. So people can sign this petition yep. to sort of force a response. Isn't that how this works? When it gets to 15,000, you have to get a response from someone? Correct. Yep. So this this is just one example of the many, many travel, uh, excuse me, the, the many petitions that have, have been out there. Um, this is a, a fairly prominent one because it's on change.org. Anybody with an email can can basically sign it. Um, you're, you're basically just stating that, yeah, this is important to me. Um, you're not signing up for anything. It's, it's purely just stating, hey, I want this to be re-looked at. I think that, you know, obviously, like it says, there's, there's millions of people out there that are separated and, uh, and this is just, like I said, one of many examples. There are tons of, of travel bans specific to certain countries, to specific to, you know, um, different areas of, of this issue. Um, but this is one of the best ones because it's the, one of the broadest. So. I'm trying to sign it right now and I'm getting another screen. I wasn't ready, but I just signed it. That's all right. I'll figure out what they're asking no me to do now when I'm recording the screen. But I just saw, I think I'm number 13,483 or something was my number to, to 15,000. So. It's really cool to see how these petitions develop over time, too. I mean, I've seen so many where it's like, oh, this petition is closed because it didn't get enough signatures. And you're just like, oh, come on, people, like, get it together. But, you know, I think this one is so close. And uh, I don't know. I think I think our time is coming that, you know, at some point something's got to give. Um, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the faith aspect that if it's meant to happen, it will. Um, sure. But like I said, you know, packing up all my wedding stuff and, and pushing off a date for the third time, it takes a lot out of you. You lose a lot of hope and, and yeah, it's just it's tough. So um, let's fast flow, let's flash forward and sure. it's lifted. He's here. What's the first thing you're going to do? once all this crap is over with and you guys can just get married and live your lives? God. Um, well, I'm probably going to tackle him in the airport and he is fully <laughs> aware of that. And he is okay. He's like, I've come to terms with this. I'm ready. <laughs> like, but no, I, I honestly think I'm just going to hug him. I can't tell you how many days I felt so alone. And the pandemic, I, I know, again, I, I'm I'm very blessed to know that this is my biggest struggle during the pandemic. People have lost their lives. People have lost their jobs. People have lost their homes. I know that my my piece is this big in, in the, the grand scheme of things. Um, but I just want to hug my person. And, you know, for us, it's going to be probably, honestly, taking five minutes to both of us probably sleep because we are so tired and just stressed and anxious and pressed over this. So probably sleep and hug him and then go to the courthouse or go to the, go to our local church and find on that dotted line because I am not letting him go. Um, 
I think, you know, for us, this doesn't stop here though, too. You know, when the, when the borders are lifted, this is something that now I'm really passionate about because I know it directly affects my person and, and my guy. Um, so if I can help other people in any way, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep reading and researching and advocating because this is, this has been the hardest year of my life. And I like to think I can do something positive about it. Um, you know, starting today. Yeah. That's a great attitude. Yeah. Doing this, right. You're sharing your story, opening up so that other people can be aware of it. And that's, that's step one always. Right. So that's great. Yeah. No, for sure. writing the bullet and you know, it's like I said, it's not a warm, fuzzy topic, but it's, I think it's important yeah. because you know, a lot of us take what we have for granted as far as, you know, our relationships in our life. And it's like, go home and hug your, hug your loved one a little tighter tonight because not everyone has that right now. So right. whether it's from, the COVID and them suffering or from a travel ban. All this, you know, all important. So how would you describe this past year, this uh, love is not tourism journey that you've been on and are still on? How would you sum all that up if you could only use three words? Ah, I was prepared. I've been thinking <laughs> about this for the last couple of years. I'm completely honest. Um, so I think in our current climate right now and, and what's currently going on in the world, there's so much hate and so much judgment and so much, you know, so much bad going on. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, what matters is love. I'm in this situation because I love, 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 love William. And all I want to do is be with him. Um, and I think if nothing else, this year has taught me that love trumps hate. There you go. So those Love are the three. Trump. Any version of hate, any version of struggle, any version of, you know, hardship, anxiety, depression, love can conquer it all. I dig it. I love that. Love that, right? So we're going to put links <laughs> in the show notes for the change.org petition the Love Is Not Tourism site, a bunch of the other stuff you sent me. So if you guys are watching this or if you're listening to this, please check it out because chances are, even though you don't, might not know Allison, there's probably somebody within your circle of connections that is affected by this, either for you know marriage, like is in your case, or all the things you rattled off, which I didn't really think about it. I only thought about it in marriage because I know that was your case, but you're right. I mean, you're already married, you know, kids. There's so many different ways that this is affected and you know we figured out that there's a way to you know open up businesses and people can go back to work so why can't we do this part right so uh i agree with you it seems like it's been delayed and we should all do our part to try to bring it along so you can just hug your person i love that like you said that you know yeah. it's that simple like, oh, my person. yeah yeah all anybody wants to do there's no you know there's ways to do this safely and i i get the fear i am i am the biggest like I said, I'm the most anxious person I know. So the fear is real and anxiety is real and the stress is real, but let's get it together. <laughs> okay, sure. yeah. Well, I appreciate you opening up um, and sharing your story with all of us. So thank you. And uh, if anybody has questions for Allison, you can send them to us. We'll get you in touch with her of how you can help. And we'll all do our part to, to help figure this out. Thanks, Miles. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm open and, and ready to answer any questions. This is definitely not, like I said, something I, I knew I was going to learn about, but here we are. And I'm game to answer any questions anyone might have.